Have you ever watched one of my previous videos or maybe a couple of my previous videos where I'm stick welding and notice that I may only burn half a welding rod and throw the rest in my rod bucket and thought to yourself, why do these pipeliners waste so much stick rod? I'm gonna answer that question in today's video and we're also going to be welding out this 12 inch pipe entryway, the biggest entrance I've ever built. So I've been excited to share this project with you. Also, I wanted to let you know that this weekend is the last chance you have to enroll in the Pipe Fence course. Enrollment closes Monday, March 27th at 8 p.m. Central Time. You can find it in the description of this video or you can go to arosswelding.school. If you don't know what the Pipe Fence course is and maybe you've wanted to learn how to build pipe fence, go to arosswelding.school. Everything's online. You go at your own pace. We're coming up on springtime, or technically I think it is spring now. What better time than to learn how to build pipe fence? If you have any questions, text me at 405-643-7176. All right, we got everything fit up now. It's time to weld this puppy out, or at least weld out what we're going to. We got it tacked to this top piece, but we're not gonna weld anything out because we're gonna end up cutting those tacks. That way this thing can be broke down more or less and hauled in three different pieces. So we're just going to weld one, two, three, four on the other upright. I've got my lead strung out. I'm headed to get my remote and my rod bucket and my welding hood. And then we'll be welding with 532-8010. It's pretty cold this morning, so I had it on high idle so it could warm up a little faster, I reckon. But I wanted to bring you over here and show you what I got her set on. My SAE 300, I got it set on the 150 range, straight up and down. I've got set on remote, toggle switch down for remote. Got our rod bucket, 532-8010, and a file. I'll get a grinder and my welding hood, and uh, I think we'll be ready to rock and roll. Twist lock. Got my remote set on 60. This is what we're gonna be welding. Got a slight gap there, but it's touching everywhere else. And there's a slight gap in the throat, but I actually did that intentionally because when welding in an acute angle, which means less than a 90, it takes more heat to, to burn that rod. So that gap is actually helping us and it's gonna allow us to get better penetration. So it's a better quality of a weld. All that to say is 60 is a little bit warm, but what I'm gonna do is just put a hot, like a, like a warm pass around all of it, more or less acting as a, a, a root pass kind of. I'm not actually concerned about getting full penetration, but I do wanna put effort into penetrating this right here versus just putting one pass over this. Again, just better quality of a weld by getting as much penetration as possible. So with one pass with 532-8010 on 60, and then I'll probably, I may cap some of it on 60, but most likely I'll be on the 50 range or on 50 right here on my remote to put the final pass, the cap pass.
could have stood to be a little bit harder right in here but if you notice I'm just kind of poking it in there and then on my on my back whip or whatever you call it where I where I flow my puddle back out I just kind of I butter it back out but on that down motion I'm I'm putting a slight little dig in it you know dig dig deposit anyway could have been a little warmer but to keep things simple I just keep it on the same heat and I'll go all the way to the bottom weld the other side do that same thing on all four of these brush them all off and then put a cap pass For the cap pass, put it or I left it on 60 for this top. Actually, I'll probably leave it on 60 all the way down. Time to lay down, boys. Time to make a bed. Now to get my mud board and the old ladder, maybe. 
Hopefully the ladder ain't too tall. Let's see here. Ah, gotta make the bed. Make the bed. Okay, gotta see. Do the old, do the old test lay. Yeah, that might work. I'm gonna bring her back just a little. Well, right like that there, all right. Sling this around here like so. Oh, without working a pipe. This is just the first pass on this one, but. Oh yeah, that's where it's at, ladies and gentlemen. The old lay down motion. up the hill a little bit which is all right come take a look and see I'll show you all what I'm looking at okay now you're laying on the mud board with me and we're looking at this bottom let's get a little old welding rod scratch this off see what this looks like little old whip motion just to fill the gap there and then we'll throw us a cap pass right over that and we're not going to weld these three welds on the nervous wreck because that one time I welded that one on accident because I was in weld mode so I'm just reminding myself Somebody commented in a previous video about why I throw so much rod away with stick rod. The answer is because of habit. Being a pipeline welder and uh, specifically, well, I was gonna say specifically testing, but definitely on testing, but really on the line itself, you know, on the pipe fabrication itself, it's a habit to start with a new rod. And it's mostly just due to trying to keep the weld quality because sometimes if you don't start with a new rod, for one, it's harder to start and sometimes it'll start to stick and it'll start to break the flux off. When you do that, that's more of a chance of arcing the pipe because you're, you know what I mean, wiggling it and trying to start it and it's just more of a chance of arcing it so you just throw it away and get a new one. Also, starting with a new rod lessens the chance of getting porosity right where you start. Making x-ray welds on pipeline work, the goal is to uh, not have trash, holes, porosity. You know, you want it to pass x-ray, you know, you want it to hold so you just start with a new rod just to be sure here let's see I think it's time for me to go down low it's right there at the right there where oh yeah see it's right there where it's really too high but oh, it's just right there it's a bad spot kind of need to come down some more yeah I better come down some more Afraid of that. For the record, on some projects like we're doing here, fence projects versus pipeline projects, if I'm at the end of a project and I've only got a couple more welds left and I'm out of 
full length rods in my rod bucket rather than going and grabbing a couple more new rods I will look down in my bucket and start picking out the longest burnt welding rods and I will weld with them to finish my project usually. But if I'm pipeline welding, like I said, the habit is to start with a brand new rod. This is actually some pretty good advice for those of you that may be green to welding also, green to stick welding. Starting with a fresh welding rod is going to be less frustrating to fire up than trying to fire up with a welding rod that all the flux has broke off the end just like I mentioned, it's going to be way easier to start with a fresh rod. So when you're learning, just look at the waste or whatever of welding rod as part of the cost of learning how to stick weld and get better at stick welding. It's a done deal. We got her all capped off. Made sure and didn't make these welds. I was worried about that. I really was. So downhill, we can go through some clear lenses. Oh, I love it though. Reminds me of pipeline. I'm gonna go ahead and change out my clear lens. That way, so welding hood's ready whenever we need to make a weld next. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, enrollment for the Pipe Fence course closes here in just a couple of days. If you have any questions about the course, text me at 405 643 7176. We hope you have an awesome weekend and remember, drink plenty of coffee. <laughs> and remember also, learn something every day. <laughs>